next part of this uh, lunch symposia that is supported by uh, Olea Medical and also Provicon. Let me introduce uh, Stefano Casagranda, PhD. He's a research and innovation team leader and uh, molecular imaging project manager at Olea Medical. Stefano Casagranda is a trained biomedical engineer from the University of Pavia in Italy. And uh, Stefano is now leading the development of the CEST MRI product at Olea Medical on brain tumor applications. The subject of his presentation is now about clinical application of CEST MRI. Please, Stefano. Thank you, Andrea, for your kind of introduction. So thank you very much, everyone, to be here. So um, today I will look uh, to talk about an innovative method to perform a molecular imaging uh, on a 3 Tesla MRI scanner that is called a chemical exchange saturation transfer. So uh, first of all, uh, I want to talk why there is, there was, and there is still an interest in bringing CEST from the preclinical world into the clinical world. So already with advanced uh, technologies like uh, perfusion, diffusion, functional MRI, these have profoundly changed the clinical diagnosis of uh, tissue anatomy and function. But these methods uh, have less impact on the molecular uh, level for diagnosis. So uh, the development of molecular imaging uh, can help, uh, first of all, the diagnosis of the pathological tissue, bringing more information regarding, for example, the peptides concentrations, or, for example, even for molecular response to treatment. Uh, there are uh, uh, several cases of the, for the distinction between a radionecrosis and pseudoprogression, where we already saw that this technique can bring a big added value. So my presentation will be um, divided in three parts. First of all, I will uh, speak about a little bit uh, the CES principle and techniques, because it's not uh, still a molecular imaging technique known as spectroscopy. Uh, then uh, I will present four case report from our collaborator, uh, Sotirios Bizdas, uh, and his uh, hospital team at University College London. And finally, from uh, uh, Dr. Luciani Kelly and uh, uh, Dr. Um, Stefan Lerici from the Lapitia Hospital in Paris. So the first two will be about uh, the glioma and a brainstem tumor characterization and the other between the distinction of radionecrosis and tumor recurrence. So just to give you an idea what are the CEST principles, to explain it's kind of easy in the way that uh, in the MR machine we don't saturate the water with the, the RF pulse, but we saturate some molecule of interest that can have hydrogen protons that can be exchanged with those of water. So there are uh, some molecules that have this property. Uh, for example, here we have the amide from the backbone of uh, peptides and proteins. And if we saturate with an RF pulse uh, directly these molecules uh, using uh, uh, their uh, frequ resonance frequency, the hydrogen proton is uh, saturated and is uh, automatically uh, spontaneously exchanged with those of water. So automatically the pool of water here decreases. If this exchange takes place uh, more times, for example 100 times, the detectability of this uh, chemical substance is amplified by a factor of 100. And so uh, the um, difference between the pool of water before and after this uh, chemical exchange is called uh, CEST effect. So uh, the other property that is interesting is that this image can be, uh, this uh, saturation can be stuck in traditional uh, imaging such as uh, gradient echo, API, uh, cube, or SSFC, for example. And uh, so this exchange ends uh, from, uh, or when uh, we have a steady state, or at the end of the radio frequency pulse. And uh, this uh, exchange rate depends on, uh, oh, sorry. This uh, exchange rate depends on uh, molecule concentration, temperature, and uh, pH, uh, pH level. So there are different uh, techniques of CEST, uh, because when uh, the, um, the cell 
from uh, the tissue, from, tissue, from healthy became cancerous, we have different change in the, pep in the peptides or proteins pattern. So we have higher amide concentration, for example, this can be detected by a technique called amide proton transfer. We have a protein unfolding effects that can generate an arousal effect. Or uh, we have uh, the, um, the tissue as a, uh, for the Warburg effect as an elevated consumer of glucose, glucose test. Or uh, we have also an extracellular acidosis. And this can be detected by uh, acidosis. test. So today I'm just focused on uh, amide proton transfer that is the, the main application now used on uh, the three Tesla MR scanner. So how does this work? So, um, so this is a spectrum of one voxel. So multiple acquisitions are required at different uh, offset. Uh, so the big pool that you see at zero ppm is the, is, the, um, is the pool of water. And this small pool here is the pool, for example, of amide. So the sequence should already be able to kill other competitive effects that can contaminate the, the extraction of the signal. Finally, there is a big uh, post-processing work. We need to center the curve at zero ppm. Uh, that is the relative frequency of water because this uh, is uh, alterated by busier homogeneity. We have to do the noising, B1 correction, motion correction. So for example, in the software that we have now for a search for CEST, we do all these uh, uh, post-processing steps. And uh, finally, once we have the full spectra, we do an asymmetry between the left side, that is we call the reference, and the uh, label side where there is the emit effect, and finally we start the saturation transfer effect of the uh, emit. So this method is called emit proton transfer weighted imaging. Uh, finally, uh, important thing is that this method is non-contrast, so uh, no contrast agent uh, uh, is, uh, injection is required. And is, um, was available, I mean, CES was available before on seven Tesla scanner, now is available on three Tesla MRI scanner from different uh, uh, RM um, constructor. So I, I start with this uh, first um, um, case report from Dr. Bizdas. Uh, that is collaborating with us. So we have uh, here the, I want to show you the role of uh, APT, multiparametric MRI, in brain glioma characterization. So here we have a 14 year old man with non migraine uh, headache with Chuseitsu, and he has before the acquisition also left leg and head weakness. And so uh, is, uh, in the structural maps, uh, it's visible that there is a large space occupying mass in the frontal operculum. And by looking at the tissue fermi match, we can see that there is also a big, uh, uh, a vast central SSF field uh, compartment. And if we look at the image of the T1 weighted before and after the gadolinium injection, we saw a shortened T1 time on the, on the ring of the, of the tumor. So we see a, a disruption of the BBB, but not an enhancement, an internal enhancement of the, of the tumor, from the tumor. And if we look at multiparametric MRI, so uh, Sotirios Bizdas add also the APT weighted from his protocol, we can see that ADC map have a lot of ADC rim that is concordant to the, um, to the rim, uh, post-GADO. Finally, we have uh, uh, from the perfusion map uh, processed with our software an increase in angiogenic activity that overlaps the IPO signal uh, of ADC. So, Already we have uh, information regarding the, hyper, um, the hypercellularity and the uh, androgenic activity. Finally, what we see with the APT weighting maps, we, here we have a sort of distribution of peptides and proteins in the tumor. So it's interesting because we see that the key, so we perform also fly suppression in the software so we can see that the, the kist signal is, um, is suppressed to avoid a false positive. And then we can see that the bottom part, the lower part of the tumor is uh, a hot spot of peptides and proteins. And uh, this uh, is, uh, and we have some interesting uh, insights. For example, when we have a higher vascularity in this patient, we see a lower concentration of peptides. So, this um, DPT map also suggests that there is uh, an increased uh, activity, uh, metabolic activity, and an increased concentration of peptides and proteins, uh, suggesting that it's a high-grade tumor, because usually the level of concentration of uh, protein is related to the increased APT weighted signal. While if you see the white matter, the gray matter, we have really uh, low signal, uh, low CC signal. 
So the conclusion is that uh, finally, after uh, biopsy, this patient was confirmed to be a uh, grade 4 ADH well type uh, glioma. So this is an interesting case where we don't have uh, a gadolinium enhancement of the contrast, if not just in the, in the rim, but we have a stronger concentration of peptides of APT suggesting uh, uh, grade 4. And um, so just to give you another example here uh, from uh, uh, Professor Bisdas and uh, the clinical scientist uh, uh, of UCL, Laura Mancini, we have also a grade, uh, here there are the, the maps of grade 2 uh, EDH mutant 1P19 Q codeleted. And we can see that the signal of amide, but even amine, because we, there is another biomarker that we, we can extract, is lower than uh, the amide one significantly. And also in a publication we did at the SMRM, we showed that, uh, that, that the, the, the ratio between amine and, uh, and amide can be also um, a metric of, uh, related to pH and uh, was able to give a statistical significant uh, uh, results in, a, in a, um, grouping the IDH mutation uh, and with the ID, different patients with different IDH status. So this is a, uh, another example of APT-weighted imaging in a brain stem tumor. Uh, so this is coming from uh, La Pitié Hospital. Uh, it's a patient of uh, Lucia Nichelli and uh, Stefan Lerichy. So we have uh, an 18-year-old female with swollen difficulty and a severe weight loss. And we can see that uh, uh, there is a, the flare map show that there is a, a strong hyperintense lesion, but the RBV doesn't show any uh, hyper, uh, clear hypervascularity. And also the only uh, gadolinium enhancement uh, that we can see is uh, in, that, uh, in this point that uh, I, um, I can maybe okay, underline also here. There is this uh, small spot. Uh, instead, the emid cest emid proton transfer uh, show a distinct uh, patent, pattern, pattern here of high protein co concentration. And uh, in fact, uh, after uh, biopsy, this was confirmed to be a grade four glioma. So uh, biopsy in this patient, uh, is, as you know, is, is really difficult. And uh, if we can have uh, uh, additional information uh, that maybe sometimes uh, perfusion cannot provide, uh, amid, uh, amid proton transfer can be really a, a powerful map. And what is interesting is that also in the T1 post gado we can see that there is a, um, a relationship between uh, the enhancement and the, the, and the amid proton transfer map. So we, we can see here that we have uh, a match between the, the gadolinium enhancement and the, the increased protein concentration in, uh, in the APT weighted map. And um, now I, I, I switch to the second part of the presentation uh, of, uh, regarding the distinction of the, between uh, radionecrosis and uh, pseudoprogression. So this is a crucial dilemma because, uh, as you know, it's very, sometimes very difficult to distinguish uh, uh, what is the lesion we are looking at during a different follow-up. So here we have a 62-year-old woman with a breast cancer, and she has a two enhanced lesion that we can see here in uh, the red circle and a pink circle. And uh, so there is a, the, the lesion are visible in both flare and T1 uh, uh, post-contrast. So uh, these two metastases were treated with uh, gananife uh, um, stereotactic uh, radiosurgery and then treated with uh, radiotherapy. After, so the, the baseline is on the left, and uh, two months after radiotherapy, we see the response. We see that, one, uh, that both lesions are decreasing. But after 12 months, we can see that one of the two lesions, the one uh, in, uh, in the red circle, uh, is increasing in size. And um, while the other one is still increasing. So the question is, the lesion is uh, in the red circle. What is it? Is it a progression or radionecrosis? So uh, the KIP in uh, Paris, they perform a multimodality imaging. So with multimodality, I mean that it is not only include a multiparametric MRI, but even PET to understand what's going on. So we see here that uh, um, the, uh, the perfusion imaging doesn't show uh, any uh, hypervascularity for this lesion, neither SL. 
But uh, if we look at the amide proton transfer weighted images uh, in the amide and the amine range, we can see that there is uh, um, a green spot. And uh, in the software, we perform a fly suppress uh, APT test in, just to be sure to suppress a liquid signal from a kist or a, a MOCDRE in this case. And so uh, after, uh, and uh, also this uh, patient has a PET acquisition, but uh, no, there is no even, while the test is, um, is showing uh, a convincing enhancement, the PET doesn't show any hypermetabolism, and uh, neither the, um, the perfusion show any hypervascular activity. So uh, what was interesting is that after other two months, so on the left we have the 12 months uh, fo uh, follow-up where uh, CEST amide proton transfer was the only image that uh, uh, suggests uh, uh, pseudoprogression. So after two months, uh, the lesion in flare increased, and the perfusion map, the SC perfusion map, RBV, uh, with the leakage correction, uh, confirmed uh, that this was a uh, um, tumor progression given by the higher vascularity of the profile of the curve that, uh, that we can see here. And what is interesting is that also uh, that as a curiosity in this case, we can see that amide proton transfer signal cartography at 12 months seems to be more in agreement uh, with the flare hyperintensity at 14 months than in 12 months. Seems also to predict some sort of spatial uh, future development of the lesion. And uh, regarding the other stable lesion, we can see that uh, uh, after uh, 12 months after radiotherapy, uh, we can see that uh, uh, on the right, we have the radionecrosis and uh, um, NCEST, apt weighted map, doesn't give any hyper signal uh, from this lesion. So confirming that this was uh, uh, radionecrosis. Why on the left we have the, um, the hyper signal given by the uh, tumor progression. So, for, for example, for this case report, uh, it's interesting to see that uh, APT West could be a useful uh, tool for the distinction between tumor progression and radionecrosis. Could be early the, the perfusion, so we need to see this uh, in a higher population, and of course, the signal from hemosiderin need to be suppressed because there could be some exchange between uh, hemosiderin proteins and uh, to the cest signal. So th these need to be also suppressed. And we have uh, finally another case from uh, uh, amide proton transfer. Uh, early detection uh, of uh, tumor progression. So this is uh, um, an interesting patient, and with uh, Lucia we did uh, a review for current opinion in oncology. It was uh, uh, published a few few days ago, and uh, we can see here that we have a 54-year-old woman with breast cancer, and we see that she has a single brain metastasis. So it was treated by sur surgical resection and then treated with uh, SRS to the cavity. And we can see that nine months after, there is a linear contrast, a tiny linear contrast that is seen in the shortened T1-weighted post-gadolinium imaging. And so they perform a multimodality, multi-parametric image in this case, and we can see that um, the, the, if, we, if you look, for example, at the ADC, it doesn't show any diffusion restriction. Uh, the dynamic susceptibility contrast perfusion, no neonangiogenesis, and uh, um, we can see in the SOW some hemocidity signal. But, for example, uh, so um, it is interesting that for, in, uh, for this patient, uh, emit pronto transfer show an increased uh, signal in this area, suggesting that uh, this patient uh, has indeed uh, tumor progression. And uh, after three months from the baseline, uh, we can see that this uh, signal that was uh, visible uh, in the amide proton transfer cest map is also visible in the T1 post gadolinium image. But also, um, but also after biopsy, uh, it was confirmed, in fact, that it was a uh, uh, tumor, so it was, um, was progression. So, the conclusion of this uh, case report uh, is that uh, 
Uh, we think that adding uh, APT weighted imaging, SEST imaging to multi-parametric MRI protocol can change uh, patient management as they offer uh, complementary information for lesion characterization, so for example, high uh, or low grade, or even uh, to have more insight about uh, IDH status between uh, uh, before the um, before the biopsy, and uh, or either to use uh, uh, emid proton transfer to detect where there is the higher uh, um, hot spot uh, signal from uh, proteins, maybe to get uh, the most interesting uh, area to perform uh, surgery, most informative area to perform surgery, a uh, biopsy. And, and uh, finally, for uh, post-treatment assessment, because uh, if, um, if CEST is, uh, is, seems to be able to uh, predict uh, uh, tumor progression a few months before uh, perfusion, this is really something, uh, something interesting. So uh, right now in our last year, uh, in our new software, we, uh, in our, the last version, we have this uh, CES plugin for research use. And uh, so our collaborators are using this software to do the post-processing of the emid proton transfer weighted images. And so I want to thank you, all of you, for your attention. So these are my contacts. So if you are interested also to, to do some uh, CEST imaging, uh, we will be very happy to help uh, even in uh, collaboration uh, uh, with, with collaborations. And uh, so I want to thank you also all the collaboration here that will help us to develop uh, this, uh, this technology at, uh, at 3 Tesla. And yeah, thank you very much for, uh, for your attention. So if you have any question, I will be uh, happy to answer. May I ask you a question? Uh, hello. I think, yeah. Hello. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation. I think it's a perfect example between, uh, of a healthy relationship between the industry and radiologists. Thank you. Um, do you have any uh, figures as to specificity or sensitivity? Uh, for distinguishing between tu uh, true tumor progression and radiation necrosis. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so do you mean if we have uh, uh, if we have perform a, a, a multi um, longitudinal studies, or yes, any kind of study would uh, it would give you a, a do you have an ROC curve or a, um, speci a especially sensitivity? Yeah. I'd be interested to know. Yeah, so right now uh, with the LAPT hospital, so uh, they, are, they are adding uh, emitted proton transfer in their clinical routine. So in, uh, we started uh, uh, really a few months ago. And so now uh, they acquire more than uh, 50 patients. And some of them have also the, um, the follow-up. So for now, we just process few patients. And uh, now we are focusing on doing uh, the world post-processing. And so we need to, before understand uh, how to, how can I say, how to uh, do this analysis to, let's say, um, segment the lesion of interest and then do the same in the, the normal appearing wave matter and then perform the change of APT weighted signal uh, in this patient and if, how this signal is also developing uh, during, uh, um, during time uh, in, um, in, um, yeah, and the follow-up. So we have also, as I showed before, we have also the perfusion uh, susceptibility weight images as, uh, as, or ADC as other biomarkers. So also, I think that soon we will do a full statistical analysis to see also how to move forward uh, for future step in this context. And for sure, uh, I think that uh, this year or next year, we will provide uh, a full scientific publication on this subject. Uh, hi, my name is Pia Sangren. Thank you, Stefano. It was a very nice presentation, and Thank I've you, seen some of your work before. I just have a question regarding the APT-weighted uh, sequence. Yeah. Because we know that there are different APT-weighted sequences out there, yeah. uh, uh, both by vendors yes. as well as between in the same vendor, there might be different work packages of APT-weighted uh, sequences. Are all those possible to post-process uh, through this, or is it a specific APT sequence that needs to be used? That is some that you know, uh, 
Vistas is using in London and there's the same yes. that is used in Paris, or is it actually different vendor approved APT weighted sequences? Mm -hmm. Because that is for the community with the APT weighted imaging, the whole issue is that, you know, as you know, yeah. there are many yeah, different sequences out and work packages and they are still constantly improving. And um, that's my question, if they are applicable. Of course. Thank you, Pierre, for your, for your question. And, uh, yes, is, uh, so uh, before, because we work before in the Glim project, uh, Olea Medical was one of the partners, uh, we start to use uh, and we recommend uh, the WIP 1816B of Siemens, that is that for, the, uh, for doing 3D APT. And uh, so before, uh, in our first version, we work specifically with the Siemens 3 Tesla MR scanner and uh, this WIP, because also they have, uh, they have a sequence called Wasabi that do B0 and B1 mapping, uh, and so we have a method to process this map and do nice pre and post-processing. Uh, but in the software, uh, yeah, we are moving now to process also the G images from General Electric, from their WIP, 2D and 3D. So uh, right now, uh, yeah, we are moving forward, and um, also on this, the thing is that in the software, we can even, uh, if the offset of the saturation that are not included sometimes in the DICO, we have the possibility to include a TXT file with the offset. So this can be also used in uh, homemade uh, sequences. So we can perform the B0 correction using the minimum of the zeta spectra and center is 0 ppm using the smoothing splines. Or if not, we use the Wasabi uh, method uh, that we have implemented a technology to do it in uh, three, four seconds to do B0 and B1 mapping that we recommend if uh, you use the three Tesla MR, MR um, from, um, from Siemens. And uh, then we will see if we will implement other B0 mapping methods. But for, for the moment, uh, let's see that uh, we can process Siemens images, G images, uh, but we cannot uh, process the APT from Philips because they have their own uh, technology to, to perform it. Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. And so, sorry, to answer your question also, yes, all the collaboration here are using uh, Siemens 3 Tesla MR scanner. Okay. No. Thank you very much. And also, just to give you a, an extra slide, also this is another, uh, so because I have few uh, minutes left. This is also um, another uh, emit proton transfer imaging. Uh, this is not uh, in brain tumor, but this is on a multiple sclerosis. And so we have uh, a partner from uh, Newcastle Hospital in Australia. And so they are using the same uh, Siemens uh, 3 Tesla scanner as uh, University College London and uh, Paris, and they're using post uh, Olea Medical. And uh, they also perform a study to see the peptides uh, concentration uh, in, uh, in multiple sclerosis. But yeah, for now, this is a really preliminary studies, but uh, we are obtaining some uh, insight uh, to, let's say, characterize uh, um, MS lesions. But these, uh, let's say, needed to be seen now in, uh, in more patients. Perfect. Thank you very much.